Okay, so this is the DPVR E4 and at first glance you might not think this is anything special, but hold on. Priced at $500, this is one of the most affordable PC VR headsets in the market. It's a tethered headset, uses Fresnel lenses and a single LCD screen, but here's where it gets more interesting. The E4 has a near 4K resolution, offers refresh rates up to 120Hz and it doesn't demand super high PC specs, making it even more budget friendly. It also uses a DisplayPort 1.4 cable, which delivers uncompressed visuals. If you use a streaming solution on a standalone headset like Quest with AirLink or Virtual Desktop, you will have compressed visuals even if you use a USB cable. So you might see some stuttering or some compression artifacts, which is not the case with cabled PC VR headsets, which some of you may prefer. So I wanted to give DVVR e4 a chance and when i tried it they managed to surprise me at first i didn't even really want to try it because i was skeptical as i did a review of a dbvr headset about three years ago and if you've seen that you understand why i approached this model with high caution their previous headset was underwhelming to put it mildly. So when DBVR wanted to send me the E4, I told them I would only make a video if it genuinely had something noteworthy. And guess what? They've improved tremendously, particularly with one aspect that might even outshine other PC VR headsets, and that is in its user experience. Setting up the E4 for Steam VR was incredibly smooth, one of the easiest I've encountered rivaling many PC VR headsets. This made me wonder, how did a small company like DBVR manage to create such an affordable headset with these features? Are we looking at compromises or is this just a significant leap forward for them? Let's take a look at this today and if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and join us beyond reality. So for this price, you get the E4 headset itself, controllers along with AA batteries for them, an accessory box containing documentation, a power adapter, a 2-in-1 cable featuring the DisplayPort 1.4 and USB-A on one end and a proprietary connector on the other. This one has a screw-in for secure attachment. They also included earplugs and soft rubber lens protectors for prescription glasses and pretty thoughtfully included cable organizers with the headset. A small detail but significantly convenient for VR players. Now initially looking at the design, I thought the plastic looked cheap and might feel that way. Too. However, it's actually a smooth soft finish that's quite resistant to scratches. The glossy front with rainbow accents adds a nice touch and it lights up in colors of your choice, including an RGB rainbow option. I mean, every gamer loves that, not that it makes any difference. In terms of build quality, it feels surprisingly robust, not at all flimsy. I think it's actually better than the PSVR 2, which feels way more plasticky and easily breakable. The DBVR e4 is also lightweight at just 280 grams without the head strap making it lighter than many competitors the top strap is made of stretchy rubber with three fixable adjustable spots i like how flexible it is making it a comfy fit a particularly convenient feature is the 90 degree flip up design great for some quick real world checks without having to remove the headset completely great for quick drinks or checking your phone for example However, there is a minor design flaw here. The face cover tends to obstruct my eyes a little when flipping it back down, which can be a bit of a hassle because I can't just flip it back down without putting my finger in there and moving the face cover. Hopefully there will be some more face cover accessories in the future, but with a headset that is not super well known, that might not be the case. The E4 also includes a pass-through feature, which, while not high quality, serves its purpose for really quick real-world glances. But I tend to use the flip-up design more here. Talking about comfort, remember this is always subjective, but I found the E4 to be reasonably comfortable. Unfortunately, to achieve a clear display, I had to wear it very tight, which did apply a significant pressure on my forehead. However, even after 30 minutes of continuous play, it didn't cause any huge 
huge discomfort, so it's really not bad. And I'll talk about the display stuff in a bit. Here's the first surprise. When I set up the E4, I had to download their software called DPVR Assistant 4, which gave me clear instructions on how to connect the headset to my PC. And after a few next clicks, I'd be in this screen. The only thing I had to do now was start Steam VR, and it recognized the headset immediately, and I could start gaming straight away. This is a huge improvement from my last time with DPVR three years ago. The software setup is user-friendly and astonishingly straightforward, which is a welcome change from the often finicky setups of PC VR headsets that are not by Valve themselves. The HP Reverb G2, for instance, uses Windows Mixed Reality software and was honestly a bit annoying to use with the Steam VR. It's just a breath of fresh air as it's usually not that easy and I'm particularly impressed since this is a small company. Most small headset manufacturers don't focus on VR software while it's one of the most important things. Next to this, I was also impressed by the new tracking on the DPVR E4, which is a massive step up from their previous models. They've shifted to inside-out tracking for both the headset and controllers, meaning no more external sensors needed, which is a game changer compared to their old Nalo system, which was frankly terrible. Now, okay, the shift to inside-out tracking is not always great, as even here, software needs to be good for good tracking. But I'm again surprised to say that tracking loss is rare now. I mean, I have not been able to play many different genres, but what I did play was mostly adventure type of games, which I'm shooting in there, and it was great. Sure, there are the usual dead zones, like when the controllers are behind your back, but recovery is quick, which is usually done by good prediction software. Compared to some other inside-out tracking headsets I've tried, the DPVR E4 tracking is notably reliable. Then the E4 comes with built-in speakers that are quite loud, but the audio quality isn't exceptional. It's passable for integrated speakers and I appreciate the convenience of not having to use separate headphones at all times. And for those wanting better sound quality, the headset includes an audio jack in the cable. You can use the provided earplugs which offer slightly better sound, albeit with some noise issues. So if you want an optimal audio experience, I recommend using your own headphones, especially since you have the flexibility to choose any compatible set with your PC. So while audio is functional, it's clear that DPVR made some trade-offs in this area. This is what the DPVR E4 microphone sounds like. This is an unfiltered, unedited audio recording using the DPVR E4 microphone. So. Let me know what you think. In my opinion, the microphone doesn't sound bad, which is good news for Shoujo VR. As for the controllers, they're pretty standard. It's the same as the Quest 2's. Likely inspired by Qualcomm's reference design. It's a standard layout with tracking rings, but it has a glossy finish on the grip and trigger buttons. This gives a softer feel for your index and thumb fingers, which is a nice little touch. However, the haptics left me a bit underwhelmed. They seemed a bit inconsistent, especially noticeable in rhythm games. Also, there are no capacitive sensors on the controllers, which isn't a deal breaker for me, but I do miss it. Now, VR headset clarity isn't just about resolution, it involves displays, lenses, and their calibration. So how does all this translate into your gaming experience? Before diving into that, a quick note, I was initially slated to review a pre-production unit of the DBVR E4 months ago, about in April, I think. However, they got a lot of uh, significant software issue complaints and that was causing display problems. So DBVR decided to hold back on sending it to us. They have since addressed these issues, improving heat dissipation as well in the updated model, which is the one I have right here, which should also be the one you would get if you uh, buy it now. Keep this in mind when looking at all the reviews as this might still be based on the earlier version. So to continue on the display, when I first put on the E4, I immediately noticed a warping effect in the displays. This often happens if their interpopulary distance isn't set correctly 
correctly. But the E4 unfortunately uses software-based IPD adjustment rather than manually. Initially, I was skeptical about this, but once said, the warping issue was pretty much resolved, although I still felt like it wasn't as consistent as using a manual IPD adjustment. If you look very closely, you can tell that the headset is trying to fix your visuals by software. So at times there are some strange visual artifacts. Now as a reviewer, I was looking for it, so I think it's not bad actually, and that most of you could get a comfortable experience. But it's something to note for those more sensitive to these things. There are a few more aspects that didn't quite hit the mark. The screens have a lower persistence compared to headsets like the Quest and beyond. This results in noticeable blurriness when moving your head rapidly. Chromatic aberration is also evident around the edges. The color reproduction is okay, it leans towards grayish tones and it's not exceptionally vibrant, typical of LCD displays, but the adjustable brightness feature in the software is a plus. At higher brightness, the visuals improve noticeably. The sweet spot is quite large and sharp, but only in the center. So when you're reading, you tend to move your eyes only and not your head, so it gets too blurry on the sides to make it a comfortable reading experience. Now, it's not so bad that all of this is a deal breaker during gaming sessions as you frankly forget about it. Although for productivity, this headset might not be ideal. The field of view is somewhat larger compared to the Quest 3, but it's not a significant leap forward. As for the Fresnel lenses, headsets are now moving towards thinner, improved pancake lenses, so I would say that these are older. Third disadvantage is that it produces glare in high contrast scenes, which has never been a deal breaker to me as I tend to forget about this too, but to some like people who like to watch movies using their VR headset, they won't like it. But the 4K resolution at 120Hz is impressive. In terms of performance, the E4 handled the 4K at this refresh rate smoothly in my test. Though keep in mind that my PC specs are above the required minimum. Now I found that most SteamVR titles I tried worked seamlessly with the E4 right out of the box. For those that didn't work, I could select a different controller mode in the settings of the DPVR software. They even have a list with recommended settings and this is a huge game list. This suggests that DPVR's developers have put significant effort into ensuring games are compatible with their headset. It's good because just like how some games may not work with PlayStation but do with Xbox, VR headset compatibility can vary, so it's reassuring to see DPVR's commitment to broad game support. One thing that I did notice though when playing games is that the headset makes a lot of fan noise. This might indicate it is challenging for them to cool the headset, as the headset tends to heat up fairly quickly. DPVR did say they improved heat dissipation already in this new model, but I still think it's a potential area of improvement for them. So the DPVR E4 definitely has its high points. The convenient flip-up design, reliable tracking, the straightforward software setup and game support is pretty amazing. But like I expected, there are compromises at this price point. The decision to not use two LCD screens, which means a manual IPD adjustment isn't possible affects the display quality. The screen's calibration is also not top-notch, leading to some visual limitations. However, surprisingly, the headset still manages to deliver a decently sharp and comfortable experience. It still outperforms PC VR streaming with its compression or stuttering at times, depending on your setup, of course. So yes, the E4 isn't a high-end PC VR headset by any means, but all of this at this price point does make it a viable entry-level option. If you're on a budget and have lower-end PC specs or perhaps aren't a fan of Meta, the E4 could be worth considering. But for those who can afford it, investing in a higher-end headset is still better. All in all, I am very impressed by DBVR's considerable improvement. I personally think that they're onto something by focusing more on software, as you can tell how much it has improved over the years. 
hopefully now that their software is almost right, they can focus a little bit more on the hardware again and perhaps this is a peek into the future of great budget friendly PC VR headsets. So for now, I am rooting for them. What are your thoughts on the DPVR E4? Would you consider it as a starter headset or would you rather save up for a more premium PC VR experience? Let me know below. And if this video was helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. It supports us tremendously. 